Alright guys, hey, what's up? This is Theo here, and so, you know, a bunch of you, uh, you know, a bunch of you guys in the comments were saying that you wanted to go ahead and see a, a junior developer series, uh, me just talking about, uh, you know, what, what can you do to get yourself ready for a junior developer role, what does this entail, uh, just sort of the knit and grit involved with this, and I'd like to preface by saying that uh, I wouldn't specifically look for junior developer roles. I would say if you can get into just a regular developer position right away, uh, I'm sort of taking that from simple programmer, then I think that's the best way to go. Uh, the trade-off is you. there's a lot more expected of you and you're going to be hitting the ground running. But I think uh, anything worth doing in life or just going down that path where you're you know hitting the ground running as long as you're willing to work, uh, you're going to get up to speed and you're going to learn a lot faster than, uh, you know, just being a junior developer at times, uh, if you can, and just getting into, you know, the net and grit of it and the depths of the code instead of just taking more baby steps. But um, really, it's, it's just dependent on the job. So I put together this uh, deck of slides here. And this is the Junior Developer Series. And again, you can take off Junior if you want. Just Developer Series, getting your first job, getting your foot in the door, and getting up and running as a software developer, software engineer, web developer, whatever you want to call it. And so this is part one, and I will do more if you guys are interested. So the first slide I have here is, what do you need to know? And I'd also like to preface this by saying, uh, what I do, what I work on, I'm a full stack, developer. I'm primarily front-end, uh, using a lot of JavaScript, HTML, CSS, SAS, um, Webpack, React, React, etc. But I also work with uh, C-Sharp, Razor, .NET, uh, but I'm primarily a front-end developer at this point. But overall, I'm a full-stack developer. So this is definitely going to come more from a development uh, mindset than just if you, know, you want to go work in a corporate company and just use .NET all day long, or you want to go work in a Java shop. So this is definitely more web technologies related. So uh, obviously the first you know few things you need to know is you need to know HTML, which is the structure of the web. You need to know CSS, which is how to style your web pages, and you also need to know uh, JavaScript. And JavaScript again is the interactivity of the web and making your web pages dynamic. The next thing that you need to know is you need to have knowledge of a framework or two. Now, I don't want people to get confused and think that when I say have knowledge of a framework or two, I mean that you need to be an expert, right? Uh, because I feel like in 2017, it's really easy to get overwhelmed and jump from different framework to a different framework, you know, Angular, Angular 2, React, Vue, Aurelia, you know, Elm, whatever it is. Elms, not a framework, but like all these different web technologies. So I would say learn about a framework, and I'd say right now, if I had to pick two, I would say definitely the hottest ones and the most popular ones are, are going to be Angular. I, I want to say a little bit of Angular too. I just I don't think it's getting as much traction as I had initially thought, um, and I, I don't know how many companies really have adopted it. Uh, I would so I, I personally would go with React, and the reason I say React is because it's a lot closer to uh, JavaScript, um, the heart of the language, the internals, and there's not a lot of meta or boilerplate code there. Um, so yeah, knowledge of a framework, understand you know what's actually going on with the framework, what what are its benefits, what are its trade-offs, etc. Next thing you need to know about is design patterns, and so design patterns, you know, there might be object-oriented programming. How do I scale a larger application? Um, maybe another uh, way of programming, imperative versus functional programming, you know, um, reactive programming, um, architecture, right? How do I um, lay out my application? You know, what, what's my folder structure? Where do I put everything? Where do I organize my code? And then the next one I have here in uh, Asterix is algorithms and data structures. And the reason I have it in Asterix is because this is heavily dependent on where you're going to apply for the position and what the role is. I would say, to be honest, for what I've seen uh, and what I was doing my job search, this is primarily if you're going to apply to companies in Silicon Valley or maybe a big company um, 
you know, like a Google or, you know, those giants. I think they do that more just because they have so many applicants. I don't believe it's really that great of a test, to be honest, but uh, it's what a lot of them do. Um, and the next one that I would say, just from working as a developer for over a year now, is resourcefulness. Resourcefulness in the fact that, or resourcefulness for that, uh, resourcefulness because that because you need to uh, be someone that, you know, can be flexible and can implement new features in your web application, web page, website, uh, whatever you're building. And when you can show a company that you're resourceful and a quick learner, um, there's a lot of sort of credibility that goes behind you or that you that you receive because the company knows that um, if you say you can learn something, you're going to learn something, right? So I think this is a lot more important than just, you know, oh, I've memorized the documentation of a framework. When, you, when you're resourceful and you know how to teach yourself, I think you're 10 times more valuable than someone that, again, is just an expert at one thing. So those are a few things that I think you need to know. Applying to jobs. So this is a pretty quick slide. These are a few of the sites that I used when I um, was doing my job search. And so Stack Overflow, right? I think that's a good site. Um, LinkedIn, good as well. Uh, Indeed, I feel like it's hit or miss, to be honest. It seems like there's a lot of crap on there, but you can find something or, or you can find a few good things. And Craigslist, um, I think this is also good in that Depending on where you live, you can definitely narrow it down to just that area. Uh, whereas Indeed, it just seems like it's all over the place. But um, and then one other that I saw the other day on on Hacker News is called WhoIsHiring.io, and that's like a map of the world, and it'll show you jobs by location. So these are a few places I would recommend uh, preparing for job interviews. So these are just a few resources. Uh, these first two are sites to practice algorithms and data structures. And again, this is heavily dependent on where you're applying, but leak code, this is more uh, academic, linked list, binary search trees, uh, stacks, queues, um, what else? Um, stacks, queues, arrays, uh, you know, sorts, searching, etc. And code wars is more just a lot of riddles, but it's still algorithms. Next one I would say is build CRUD applications, full stack. A lot of times, or I'd say most of the time, as a web developer or software developer, software engineer, if you're building a web application, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to have data. You have to massage that data, get it out on the page, and be able to handle uh, these operations, the create, read, update, and delete. So be comfortable building a full stack application, even though you might be applying for a front-end developer role. Again, it goes back to this resourcefulness, just knowing that uh, as a member of the team, you are not specifically uh, pigeonholed to just being a front-end developer and you know nothing about SQL Server or you, you don't know anything about MongoDB uh, or, or you don't know how to write a simple Node Express server, right? So just keep these things in mind. And I think when you're able to build a full application and also deploy it, have a little bit of knowledge of DevOps development operations, this will show the uh, companies that you're applying to that not only do you enjoy learning and enjoy building applications but also you're capable and competent of going across all ends of the stack okay so the next one is keep up with the latest technology and i will admit or i'll be the first person to admit this is very hard sometimes especially in 2017 with uh, the state of javascript and web technologies but here are a few good resources. Hacker News. Um, this I, I like it. I think it's hit or miss though too. It's almost like Stack Overflow. There's a lot of um, sort of rough people on there if you ask something. Um, but there, there's some cool stuff. You can definitely find out about uh, latest technology trends going on. I like this site, javascriptweekly.com. This will tell you, uh, show you different articles and, and different updates about javascript and you know testing and frameworks and performance etc uh, and then these are some paid sites uh, i understand not everyone has the money uh, i'm lucky enough at my work they pay for egghead io for us so that's great but from time to time i've also gotten a subscription on front end masters um, i like it it's hit or miss though to be honest and it's i think it's 39.99 a month 
or maybe yeah maybe 40 um but it, it's good like uh one of the courses that i watched on there for fun was uh a react course with you know redux and webpack and that was like 11 hours and so definitely a, i think you do get your money's worth but i would say you know it's just about what you want to learn but definitely the newest technologies on there egghead io these are more shorter videos um just straight to the point i'd say each video is like two three minutes max they have really good stuff there on javascript and frameworks etc testing Plural site is a little bit of everything in terms of web technologies. It's not just JavaScript. You can go there and learn C Sharp, ASP.NET. Um, what else? You can go and learn, you know, Python, Django, C++, Java, whatever you really want there. Uh, and Udemy. Um, this this site is hit or miss as well. There are some great courses on there. Um, usually, I sort of uh, look at it like. Um, I'll go to the web development courses and pretty much the first two pages. I feel like those are pretty decent courses. Once you start going past that, it seems like it's, it definitely is hit or miss. But I think for the value, especially with the deals they have going on, I don't mind paying 15 bucks for like a 12-hour course. I think that's pretty fair. Um, next thing is post work on GitHub. Um, so this is twofold. One, so that you know when you apply to a job, a lot of times... They say, okay, give us your GitHub link, right? And I, don't, I mean, I don't know how much every employer looks at it, but just, you know, being able to be comfortable with version control and working with different branches outside of just the master branch and merging, etc., just showing that, again, you can um, actually put your work in a version controlled uh, source like GitHub with Git, I think is important. It just shows your resourcefulness again. And finally here is teach others and for me this is a lot of times making youtube videos and just showing people okay i literally just looked at this um this concept or this um this tool today right but i want to sort of ingrain it within me more and i want to show it to someone um so i do that by making a quick video but again you can just talk with one of your friends about it you can write a blog post about it but when you teach you're forced to fill in a lot of times the gaps that um, you know you might not have realized. So these are just some tips for preparing for job interviews. Next up is what to expect at the interview. And the first thing here is this is going to vary by the company. I can't give you a one-stop shop on this. Um, so here are a few things I might you know suspect. Uh, you could have architectural sessions, and uh, this could be. How do you design Netflix? You know, how would you design Twitter? You know, you know, walk us through your thought pattern. You know, walk us through your architecture, your design patterns. What technologies would you use? And a lot of times, this is so that the development team there can see. Uh, you know, how do you scale an application? What um, what what are your choice of technologies? What what kind of programming styles do you like? What do you not like? Uh, why would you use that? And it really starts to make you, uh, or it starts getting your your mind thinking about. Um, you know, like you, you, the choices that you would make, and I think it's a, it's a good exercise. And a lot of times you could be doing this uh, on a whiteboard, right, or just just talking it out and sort of just being uh, rapid fire questions. Next one is you know, can we work with you? And a lot of times this is done by uh, you know just just getting to know you. What do you like to do? Because at the end of the day, I think a lot of times. Um, you know, especially in development, you know, you anyone can pick up the technologies, but I feel like it's very important to have a team that you can work with and that you want to work with. Otherwise, uh, might not be the the most pleasant experience if you're working with someone 40, 45 hours a week and you don't really um, get along with them that well. So just sort of seeing how you mesh with the team. Next one is, what are your goals? What do you like and what have you done? This, this just goes back to, can we work with you? What are your aspirations? Um, you know, sort of see what kind of person are you? Are you ambitious? Are you self-starter, et cetera? Uh, what do you think of XYZ technology? You know, what do you think of React? Uh, what do you think of Webpack? Uh, what do you think of, uh, you know, other technologies? What do you think of uh, Meteor? What do you think of uh, functional programming, et cetera, right? And, and giving a reason other than just, Oh, it's good. I like it. Um, you know, maybe saying talk about functional programming, and you say, "Oh, well, actually, can 
you know, I'm not too familiar with it, but I can appreciate the declarative approach. And to me, it, it reads a lot cleaner because we're not actually, you know, uh, building out the internals of the function. We are just sort of creating that fluent API. Uh, something like that, right? Just being able to understand uh, why you appreciate or you don't appreciate a certain technology. And finally, how does XYZ work under the hood? And, and I'm not saying, you know, trivia questions, right? Like, you know, how does, uh, I'm trying to think of something in JavaScript, you know, maybe like, how does uh, not a number work under the hood, right? I mean, maybe that's important, but maybe something like, you know, how does a closure work under the hood in JavaScript? And again, a closure is just a, uh, basically a function that can remember the contents of its uh, outer scope when it's created at uh, invocation time. And so stuff like that, right? Or, you know, with, with React, how does how does the virtual DOM work? What, what is that? What's so great about that? Just thinking about these things that a lot of times are abstracted away from you with a framework, but it's important that you understand because when you understand these things at an internal level, um, you're not tied down to just one framework. You can appreciate different aspects of different frameworks, different architectural styles, and that makes you a more valuable and competent developer because then you take on more of an architectural position, uh, leadership position than just, oh, I'm just picking up the new framework because I need to get some work and get a job and get paid. So uh, that's it, guys, for uh, these slides. Uh, let me know if you guys liked it. If so, we can do a part two. Um, and yeah, guys, thanks for watching. As always, have a great day, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.